أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له الحمد لله indeed we praise his due to Allah we praise him and seek him his help and forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from our soul's evils and our wrongdoings he whom Allah guides no one can misguide and he whom he misguides no none can guide I bear witness that there is no God except Allah alone without any partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his abd, servant and messenger Inshallah brothers and sisters we will be talking about a very emotional topic today um, This is the story of Abdullah ibn Zubair Many of you might ask who is Abdullah ibn Zubair Let me tell you brothers and sisters He is one of the greatest um, young sahabas who fought after the cause and after the fitna and trials and tribulations that started in the Muslim Ummah So we start with who is Abdullah ibn Zubair so now the Khalifa is Abdullah ibn Zubair and his grandfather was Abu Bakr radiallahu an, the great uh, Sahaba and the best friend of the Prophet sallallahu uh, So he was um, uh, a companion and the son of a companion and his mother was Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr. <coughs> so we can see how much of a, you know, a family line this young Sahaba and Sweet Sahaba has and his aunt is Aisha the mother of the believers and his grandmother from his father's side is Sufiya bin Abdul Muttalib the aunt of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he has a very rich family line so to say and from his father's side uh, the grandfather is Al Awam bin Khalid the brother of Khadija And he was born in the year of the Hijrah. And he was the first male to be born to the Muslims after the Hijrah. So what the what happened after the Hijrah was that the Jews of Medina has had said um, when the Muslims made, uh, made the Hijrah, they started to spread this rumor saying that they have done a magic sihr upon the Muslims so that they will never have a male child born into the lineage of any Muslim. So this spread quickly. Uh, and this spread, um, it spread for a while after the Muslims arrived in Medina. Every time a child was born, it's a female. And every time it was a male, it dies. Um, so the, the people started to believe that the Jews had put a curse on the Muslims. And the Muslims are going to end because they can't multiply now. So the people believed it. Um, and around that time, Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, she was in the last days of her pregnancy. She goes into labor and she gives birth to a healthy boy, Abdullah ibn Zubair. So this was the first, uh, and he does not die. So the Muslims were very happy with him. And they took him to his grandfather, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, And he carried him and the Muslims followed them. They raised the child and they were making takbir around Medina, saying, Allah is the greatest, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, goes and gives him to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He takes a date and chews it and then puts it in the mouth of the boy. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam names him Abdullah, slave of Allah. And they used to say that he is he resembles none other than his gra- grandfather Abu Bakr uh, radiallahu anh. More than anyone he resembles his grandfather. <coughs> And the first word Abdullah ibn Zubayr uttered when he was a child was a sword, a sayf. He was raised in the houses of a warrior, and the first word he said was the sword, a sayf. <coughs> and they used to, to say he would never leave the, the sword, meaning physically and not from his tongue. He would constantly be saying the sword or playing with the sword. And for that reason, he became one of the most magnificent warriors, and they used to say that. Uh, there, um, there were three things you could not challenge Abdullah ibn Zubair with um, Courage uh, and ibadah, worshipping Allah and his eloquence And if you look in the books of fiqh If you look under concentration You will find the mention of Abdullah 
because he used to, he used to never move in his salah. He is one that they mentioned when he would stand for salah, the bird would come and sit on him, thinking he was part of the tree. Brothers and sisters, this is such a this just shows, shows how much khushu these these men had. Today, if we uh, let alone uh, um, you know see anything while we're praying salah, if we saw a fly in front of us, we would start flinching and feeling agitated. He was stood so still that the birds used to think he was part of the tree. Um, <clears throat> An eyewitness says one time Abdullah ibn Zubair prostrated, and while he prostrated, uh, I read Al Baqara and Al Imran and Al Nisa and Al Maida, and he was still, and he still didn't raise his head. <clears throat> and so now uh, Bay'a is being given to Abdullah ibn Zubair. And he goes to his mother Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, and he went to his mother, and she uh, was over a hundred years old, and she was blind. And when he entered the room, he gave her salam, and she replied to his salam. And then she asked him, "Where have the men of Al uh, Hajjaj reached?" And he he said, "Oh my mother, in death I will find peace and tranquility." And then he said, "Oh my mother, all my companions have left me." <coughs> My companions left until my own family and my children have left my side and I only have a handful of people around me and the people are ready to give me whatever I want from this world meaning that they are allowing me to go wherever I want what is your opinion on my mother and his mother said oh my son you are more knowledgeable regarding your circumstances than me and then she said but I do say that if you know what you are on uh, as the truth then die like you are like your companions this is her child and she's telling him that if you are on the truth then die like your companions died how long will you stay on the earth being killed being killed is better this is this is a mother giving her son advice to be killed for what he believes in and for the sake of allah so then he tells her mother i fear that if the people of asham kill me that they may disfigure me and crucify me and so she tells him oh son the sheep is not hurt by the skinning after death meaning after its death uh, it, it, it's dead it doesn't feel um, when it's skinned so go on your way and seek the help of Allah and then when she said this he stood up and he kissed her upon her forehead and he said oh my mother I swear by Allah this is my opinion and I have no desire to live in this dunya for my aspiration is the hereafter and all my life I have stood up for the truth but all I wanted to know is your opinion so that your opinion strengthens, strengthens, strengthens my opinion and then his mother said come closer my son and when he came closer to her she embraced him and he, she felt that he had some metal armor on and she said oh my son what is this for people who want shahada don't wear this this is the action of someone who wants martyrdom and that's what you want so he tells her, I only put it on to make you not fear for me. So then she says, remove it. And then she tells him to tighten up your clothes so that your private, may, your private parts may not be uncovered. And he leaves saying, if I, if I know the day I'm going to die, I will be patient upon that. And she hears him and she says, be patient, inshallah. Your father's uh, uh, Abu Bakr and, and Az Zubair and your mother is uh, Sophia and the daughters of Abdul Muttalib. So he goes out to fight. <clears throat> this shows what courage and what some of these these men of uh, the Rasul, uh, these companions had, going out, and his mother also encouraging him, and he fights, uh, and all of his friends fight, and they they fought until they were killed, uh, and the one who was defending Ibn Zubair the most, fighting the most fiercely and ferociously, uh, and was the last of his friends to die was Abdullah. Bin Muti and Abdullah uh, and Abdullah bin, bin Muti had run away in the battle of Harra in Medina. We said it was a fierce battle. Uh, we said it was a fierce battle in Medina. He ran away on that day, and his, this hurt him. This hurt him a lot that he ran away on such a day, and he was fighting and he was saying, "I am the one who fled uh, during the Harra invasion, and a free man only runs on one occasion, and he refuses to withdraw on this day." the 73rd year after the hijrah and after he dies ibn zubair was fighting by himself and the narration mentioned that abdullah ibn zubair from noon until evening he fought his fighting alone 
and he's 73 years old subhanallah and they're not able to kill him and every time they attacked him he turned them back till they said i swear by allah we have never seen fighting such as his he's equal to a thousand men the enemy was saying uh, meaning he takes the characteristics and his manner and his manners and he is like his father as zubair ibn awan <coughs> so then uh, the time of Salah comes and he tells them let me pray so they left him and he prayed and while he was praying some of them took stones and they threw them at him so this is the you know this is the state of what these people of the fitan had you know turned to um, and while he was praying and some of the stones came and they flew right in front of his face and he never moved he never flinched he did not move not uh, not even a little bit the entire time that he prayed and the stones came in front of his face um, and they came and they landed near him and he would never move this is the khushu he had he is he's the one that is mentioned in the hadith for being focused in salah and uh, so focused in salah and then the fighting continues the whole army of hajjaj against one man and the whole army fights him from dawn until maghrib an entire army cannot defeat one man one man um, it shows what kind of a warrior he was so they started to throw stones at him and a huge stone struck him on his head and he fell and then he was on the floor and he was still fighting uh, this this is how much strength the 73 year old sahaba had brothers and sisters and then he cut they cut off his legs and finally they martyred him and there and and the narration mentioned that when they martyred him, Makkah erupted with crying, Subhanallah. The day he was born, Medina erupted with happiness. And the day he died, Makkah erupted with crying. And Hajjaj bin Yusuf as Thaqafi stood up and he said, O oh people, know that Abdullah was the best of people. But when he rebelled against the Khalif, then he had to be removed from Makkah. For Adam was the best of people. And when he rebelled against the command of Allah, he had, he had to be removed from Jannah. And Adam is better than Zubair and Jannah is better than Makkah. He, he twisted people. See the very nature of twisted people is that they will always give you twisted analogies. And there was no man who was more twisted than Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi He was the most twisted of people. And then the narration mentions that Hajjaj, he came to the mother of Abdullah ibn Zubair and he wanted to break her resolve. And he said, how has Allah dealt with his enemy? Asma radiallahu anha said, you, have, you may have corrupted this dunya, but Allah has corrupted your akhirah. And then Hajjad took his body and hung it in the entrance of Makkah. And the people would pass. Ibn Umar radiallahu anha passed uh, by. And the army is making takbir. They're saying, Allahu Akbar. Uh, and so he said to them, you make takbir at his death? I swear by Allah, I have seen the Muslims making takbir at his birth. By Allah, the ones who make takbir at his birth are better than the ones who make takbir at his death. And he would pass by him every day as he is hung and say, Assalamu alayka, ya Abu Hurayb, three times. He would say it every time he passes by this body out of the respect he had. And these people uh, making takbir after this great Sahaba had passed away. And all of Makkah would greet him as they pass. The people told Al Hajjaj, bring him down. And he said, no, until his mother pleads with me. And then he, the narration mention, mentions that, he, that there was a beautiful fragrance coming from his mutilated body. And what the men of Hajjaj did, they tied a cat around his waist, a dead cat around his waist and the narrations mention that the fragrance was so beautiful that even over the stench of this dead cat you could smell this fragrance and then they went to, uh, to Al-Hajjaj and they said Hajjaj now take his body down he has been up for days and Hajjaj said I swear by Allah I will not take it down until Asma radiallahu anha came, comes and begs me and when he to they told Asma radiallahu anha she said take me to him the the body of my son is because she was blind at the time and they took her to, to where the body of her son was and she made dua for her son and then she said isn't it time for this night of Allah to be allowed to come off his horse what a statement this is and when the um, when the uh, when they told Hajjaj what she said he felt so little and that he knew he had lost the battle uh, and then he brought the body of Abdullah ibn Zubair down this is a man who lived 
and died for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asma radiallahu anha, the mother of Abdullah ibn Zubair, passed uh, away only a few days after his death of her son. May Allah bring her peace, uh, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. These people were true men of Allah, true men and women of Allah. Uh, may Allah allow us to be like them and strengthen us like them. Uh, may Allah save us from all the fitan. Um, brothers and sisters, please help this channel grow and please tell us what you want to uh, see next, inshallah, um, in, in, in these videos. And uh, please help this channel grow and please forgive us for any mistakes we have made and please make dua for us. Please remember us in your dua. Say, I'm